Hi, my name is Joseph, and I'm a student here at Reinhardt University in North Georgia. Today, we're going to discuss some information about connectionism. This theory comes from the paradigm called behaviorism, which views learning as being shaped by the individual's environment. So we have some essential questions that we're going to need to go over. The first one is, what is our historical background of connectionism? Our second one is, what is the main idea of connectionism? In other words, if we were to define connectionism, what would be the best definition for it? The third question would be, what are the three laws of connectionism? And number four would be, what is the role of the teacher? So connectionism was discovered by Edward Thorndike in 1898, and he was able to stumble upon the theory when he was doing the cat puzzle box experiment. The experiment he did was he had the cats go inside this little puzzle box, and they had to figure out how to get out. At first, it took them a long time to figure out how to get out, but eventually, when they tried out different things over and over, they would be able to get out with no problem. When he placed a cat in the puzzle box for the first time, Thorndike was unable to see any evidence of flashes of insight. The successful actions appeared first by chance. He proved that the apparent cleverness arose by trial and error, and used graphs to measure the rate of learning. A well-practiced cat quickly recalls the actions that help it escape to its reward of food. If an action brings a reward, Thorndike believed that that action becomes stamped into the mind. So using the puzzle box experiment, Thorndike was able to define connectionism as a trial and error type of learning. Thorndike also argued that there would be a relationship between the stimulus and the response. Along with the concept of connectionism, Thorndike came up with the laws of connectionism, which would be the law of effect, the law of readiness, and the law of exercise. With the law of effect, an increase in certain responses will occur if the results are satisfying. And if the results aren't satisfying, then that response will decrease. So with positive and negative reinforcement, you know, one's gonna go, one response is gonna increase, one response would decrease. Oh! Hey, Kim! Yeah, I... You know what? Hold on. Let me take this in the hall. Okay. I know what you're doing. Really? Yes. You're using chocolates as positive reinforcement for what you consider correct behavior. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Chocolate? No, I don't <laughs> Sheldon, you can't train my girlfriend like a lab rat. <laughs> Actually, it turns out I can. Well, uh, you shouldn't. There's just no pleasing you, is there, Leonard? You weren't happy with my previous approach to dealing with her, so I decided to employ operant conditioning techniques, building on the works of Thorndike and B.F. Skinner. Yet by this time next week, I believe I can have her jumping out of a pool, balancing a beach ball on her nose. No. This has to stop now. I'm not suggesting we really make her jump out of a pool. I thought the bazinga was implied. I'm just tweaking her personality. You're sanding off the rough edges, if you will. No, you're not sanding Penny. Are you saying that I am forbidden from applying a harmless, scientifically valid protocol that will make our lives better? Yes. You're forbidden. Bad, Leonard. <laughs> 
With the law of readiness, it explains how ready the student is when they're in the classroom. So if the student is ready to learn, then the student would be satisfied when they are learning. If the student is ready to learn yet something kind of holds up and they're not learning, then that student is eventually going to become annoyed. And if the student is not ready to learn but is forced to engage in learning, then that student will become very annoyed. The law of exercise can be explained in one simple term. If you don't use it, you lose it. So in other words, the more the information is repeated, the more you'd be able to remember the information. If it is not repeated, then you're just going to forget. The role of the teacher is to respond with positive or negative reinforcement, motivate the students <laughs> to be ready to learn, and repeat the information. So in other words, the teacher would be using the three laws of connectionism and would implement it into his or her classroom. Yeah. To explain the role of the teacher in a gesture, a teacher would need to respond with positive or negative reinforcement, motivate the students so that they'll be ready to learn, and repeat the information.